For critical information ignored by the mainstream media, log on to davidike.com forward slash headlines now. Broadcasting live from the great city of Manchester, England. This is the Richie Allen Show on davidike.com. Good morning, good morning to you. How are you? It's 11 a.m. BST, British summertime. It's raining outside. There's not much summer here, but we are live. This is Sunday View in association. Just going to move my microphone a bit there. Uh, In association with davidike.com forward slash headlines. It's been a lovely weekend so far. I got the sun yesterday, quite a bit of it, quite a bit of it, so I did. So I'm nice and toasted. I don't believe any of that old nonsense about getting skin cancer from sunburn either. Right, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but I don't buy into that. Beautiful, beautiful weekend it's been so far. Lovely and relaxing. And I'm delighted to be chatting to you now live from Manchester. Stay with davidike.com forward slash headlines. Get on there now. All the big stories of the weekend and last week are on davidike.com forward slash headlines. All the information broken down there with analysis you will not get anywhere else. Top man is David. The Shepherd's Bush appearance and the Isle of Wight appearance before that are looming large now uh, for David Icke. It's not too far away. Tickets for the Worldwide Wake Up Tour are, of course, uh, to be found. The information is to be found on davidike.com. Great. Good stuff. Uh, I'm going to start off by saying hello to Cherry Webb. Cherry, how are you? Mentioned I was coming on this morning as I always do on social media. Cherry was the first one to say hello as she was heading out the door to go to work. She did say, though, she'd be able to listen during work. Cherry, good morning to you. I hope you'll have a good Sunday, despite the fact you've had to, well, you've had to go to work. We all have to work. Wage slaves, we all are, every single one of us. But uh, I'm sure you'll have some time later on to enjoy your Sunday. As it's live, you can contact me on Twitter, at Richie Allen Show is my Twitter handle. You can email Richie at RichieAllen.co.uk. And a massive good morning to my friend in Spain, Colin Holden. Colin, how are you? Uh, thank you very much for the link to the EcoWatch website. I am going to mention that a little bit later on in this broadcast. Thank you, Colin. Very, very apt today. Apt is the abbreviation. Well, it's the, yeah. Appropriate. I have to look it up. Very apt in light of some of the things I'll be talking to you uh, about today. So tweet me, as I said, email me, let me know your thoughts, regardless as if you're just out of the bed. Good morning, Mark Bajerski, by the way. Another good friend of mine in Spain. You've heard Mark on the programme before. He's tweeting, he's alive, he's well, and he's awake. Good morning, Mark. Check out markbajerski.com. Special guy. And Sean Bloor, uh, our friend in Greater Manchester in Trafford. Good morning, Sean. Nice to know you're listening in as well. Lots to talk about. Lots to talk about, eh? So let's just talk about it, by the way. Oh, by the way, Cherry Webb, who's now in England, is from La Linea in Spain. Frontier town. Borders Gibraltar. Of course, I passed through La Linea in the seven, eight, nine, well, eight and a half years we were in Spain, I reckon I went through La Linea, often stopped there and had a drink, uh, or went to Gibraltar from La Linea probably a thousand times, I would guess. Probably. La Linea is great. Great. Old market town. Frontier town. Cherry, how are you? Right. We've had an interesting week, haven't we, you and I? We've just seen some... We've had a strange old week. The Republican and the dedicated anti-monarchist Jeremy Corbyn shared anecdotes about the Queen at Westminster. I was thinking, you know, I'll have no... Or I have no idea what it will take before people stop putting their faith in the likes of Jeremy Corbyn and Bernie Sanders and previously Alexis Tsipras in Greece and all the other darlings of the left. I came across an interview on YouTube overnight, conducted by Owen Jones of The Guardian, and it was with Yanis Varoufakis, or Herman Munster, the former finance minister of Greece, and it (laughs) it is a disgrace to journalism. A disgrace to journalism. If I was to start teaching radio production again, something I've done a lot, often, uh, you know, off, I should say off and on over the years, if I was to start teaching again, I would use that as an example of how not to conduct an interview. It's a disgrace. Check it out if you don't believe me. 
just Google or YouTube or whatever. Owen Jones and Yanis Varoufakis, disgraceful. The darlings of the left. Well, I've never been arrogant. I, I don't believe I have. Anyway, um, I'm a pretty down-to-earth, humble guy. Here comes the but. <laughs> On these subjects, I'm tired of being right. I despair when I tell people who get all excited about men or women who really, they're like us, you know, Richie. we got to get behind them. And I say, no, they're not. Not, not at all. And they never will be like you. And then they go and do what it is I knew they were going to do all along. And then somebody else will come along that is going to deliver us from the madness of this paradigm. But they won't do it either. Loads to get into. Let's have a look at the Sunday papers. The British ones, anyway, we're coming up for six minutes past the hour already. Time flies when you're having fun. The Sunday Telegraph main story. Well, there's three or four stories. There's one about junior doctors. But the big, big story in the Sunday Telegraph, in light of Barack Obama's visit to these isles to talk about why Britain should remain within the European Union, the Sunday Telegraph run a big story. And the headline is, Barack Obama's views betray a woeful ignorance on the impact of the EU on Britain's security, says Armed Forces Minister. Do you want to hear more about that? Thought you might. I'll read you some of the story now in my best Jack and Ori voice. Barack Obama has been accused of showing woeful ignorance of the damage the EU does to British national security in a growing backlash over his intervention in the referendum campaign. Penny Mordaunt, she's the Armed Forces Minister, hit back at the American President for his failure to appreciate how European judges and laws on migration undermine transatlantic efforts to tackle terrorism. In an exclusive column for The Telegraph earlier in the week, Obama warned of the risks of Brexit and ordered Britons to vote to remain in the EU in this summer's referendum. But Miss Mordaunt uh, attacked Obama for failing to grasp the true threat to security that the EU poses to Britain. Mordaunt, who's previously worked for the Republican former President George W. Bush, said she agreed with Obama that Britain and the US were special allies, who played a vital role spreading democracy and security together through the world. I'll just pause while you get sick, and then I'll continue. She continues, Ms. Mordaunt. Have you wiped your mouth there? You have. Put the, put the bucket away. You'll be getting sick again. I don't put it away even. Mrs. Mordaunt. So she's gone from Ms. Mordaunt to Mrs. Mordaunt in the same article. This is wonderful journalism. Mrs. Mordaunt, who has previously worked for blah, 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 blah. We're special allies. Then she says, where we part company is in our views of the value of EU membership to this mission. In Obama's view, the EU doesn't moderate British influence. It magnifies it. Unfortunately, continues Ms. Mordaunt, or Mrs. Mordaunt, this opinion betrays a woeful ignorance of the practical reality of the EU's impact on our security and the interests of the UK and the US. Obama warned on Friday that divisions in Europe will weaken NATO, but often those divisions are caused by the EU itself. Obama confuses collective action and defence through NATO with the integration at all costs and damn the consequences ideology that too often motivates the European Union. More don't. She went on to say, finally, Obama must be unaware of the alarming weaknesses that allow terrorists from the so-called Islamic State to move unimpeded across Europe. And that is the result of the EU's bull-headed desire to take down all frontiers on the continent. Obama is well aware of it. He's well aware of the fact that terrorists uh, can move unimpeded across Europe. That's what it's all about. Now, earlier, uh, Theresa May was on the Andrew Marr show. I'm not going to play you any of that. I didn't record it because there's not, nothing really new in it. Marr pressed her as best as he could to accept that the status quo allows dangerous people cross borders and get access to places they really have no business getting access to. May played the same old nonsense card that we're actually more secure if we're all in it together and we're all in the club and all of that nonsense. I'm not going to play you any of that. Now, the Mail on Sunday 
Boris Johnson rages at ridiculous and weird Obama extraordinary statement to the Mail on Sunday, mocks the president over his threat to hold back trade deal in devastating intervention. And the story says Johnson, uh, in an in an outspoken assault last night, mocked uh, Obama's controversial claim that Anglo-US trade would be hit by Brexit. Johnson says the Mail stepped up his war of words with Obama over Winston Churchill, claiming that the wartime leader and the United States both stood for democracy and that the U- European Union didn't. Brexit cheerleader Johnson, says the Mail, spoke out as infighting broke out among senior figures in the Leave campaign after Obama's devastating intervention. Was it devastating Obama's intervention? Well, you can hear some of what Obama had to say right here. As I wrote in the op-ed here today, I don't believe the EU moderates British influence in the world. It magnifies it. The EU has helped to spread British values and practices across the continent. The single market brings extraordinary economic benefits to the United Kingdom. And that ends up being good for America because we're more prosperous when one of our best friends and closest allies has a strong, stable, growing economy. Get the sick bucket. Americans want Britain's influence to grow, including within Europe. The fact is, in today's world, no nation is immune to the challenges that David and I just discussed. And in today's world, solving them requires collective action. All of us cherish our sovereignty. My country is pretty vocal about that. But the U.S. also recognizes that we strengthen our security through our membership in NATO. We strengthen our prosperity through organizations like the G7 and the G20. And I believe the U.K. strengthens both our collective security and prosperity through the EU. Mm. You see, it's all about the transatlantic trade and investment partnership deal, folks. That's what it's all about. Obama is using the language of the New World Order, George H.W. Bush the new world order, the one world government. We are better together. No country is immune to the problems of the world. Collaboration, cooperation. Dominic Blackburn has tweeted me. Good morning, Dominic. When are we going to see 30,000 UK people protest TTIP like they have in Hanover? To be fair, a lot of people get out and about to protest what TTIP will mean for education, Dominic. They protest as to what TTIP will mean for the health service in this country as well, mate. So they do get out there, but are they being listened to? Boris Johnson uh, addressed the trade issue and the better together issue, or Britain even being better in the club. This is what Johnson had to say yesterday. Well, as you may know, we we don't have a trade deal with the uh, US at the moment, and we've been in the EU for 43 years years and indeed we've had a great deal of difficulty exporting some uh, UK products such as uh, beef to the uh, to the to the US I think the don't forget of the uh, non-EU trade that we do 73 percent of it doesn't involve any kind of trade deal at all uh, we would do very well trading globally uh, as we always used to do the WTO is now helping to bring down tariffs worldwide and we've got a fantastic opportunity to take back control of very considerable sums of money, £350 million per week, and our borders, and to stop the erosion of of our democracy. Mm. I'm just going to mention this. I'm not going to get into it too deeply because you've heard me get into it on the television show and on the show last week. Um, The European Union was funded and founded by the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and some of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. We know this. IG Farben, Basf, Basf, can never say that, Heist, and loads more. The same people founded, uh, backed uh, Hitler and started and funded both world wars, funded both sides basically, to create uh, you know, a post-World War Europe under the control of, of a dictatorship. That's what they did. This is what it's all about. And you won't hear this from Johnson, unfortunately. Johnson goes, he'll give you... You know, up to a point, Johnson will tell you the truth, but up to a very small point, up to a very small point, he will tell you the truth. He then talked about sovereignty, Johnson, and he had a pop at the United States human rights record, which I thought was kind of interesting, if I'm to be honest. A puppet, though Boris Johnson is, I didn't expect this. Interesting comments from Johnson. 
But I think it is very, very odd that the United States, which guards its sovereignty so zealously and so jealously, should be giving us lectures about going into this, this federal system. Don't, don't forget that, that you know, the US has not only refused to subject its citizens to the International Criminal Court, they haven't even signed up to uh, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, and they're asking the UK to go into something, or to, keep, to stay into something which is intensifying, and where 60% of the laws are now, that go through the House of Commons are now originating one way or another you've implied in that Brussels. You've implied that and, I think that, and I think that is, that is very, very perverse, you paradoxical. Mm. Perverse and paradoxical. Plenty of uh, tweets and emails coming in, so I'll get to a couple more of them, as many as I possibly can. Uh, it's at Richie Allen Show on Twitter, richie at richieallen.co.uk. Uh, David Corner reminds me that David Icke has spoken pretty eloquently about Obama's input to Brexit in David's latest video cast. He has. David's video cast is brilliant. It's essential viewing. To find out how to download it, where to subscribe to it, go to davidike.com. David's weekly video cast is terrific. Uh, thank you, David. Kim Erswell. I could do Obama's job, Richie, as I can read an order queue too. Where we differ is, though, she says, if it broke down, I could wing it. Fact. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Yeah, we've seen these people before when the order queue has gone all right. They've not done so well. Good morning, Anne Selly. Good morning, Marco. And good morning, Karen Kelly in Glasgow as well. Nice to know you're up and listening to Sunday View, which is live and is brought to you in association with davidike.com forward slash headlines. So staying with the Sunday papers momentarily, the Sunday Observer, big headline, big story, Hillary Clinton urges Britain to remain in the European Union. I'll read you just a, 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 a smidgen of that article. In a statement to the Observer, Clinton's senior policy advisor, Jake Sullivan, said, Hillary Clinton believes that transatlantic cooperation is essential and that cooperation is strongest when Europe is united. She's always valued a strong United Kingdom in a strong European Union and she values a strong British voice in the EU. Sources close to the former Secretary of State's presidential campaign said she stood fully behind Obama's opposition to Brexit, which the President said on Friday would not only undermine the international institutions, including the EU, that had bound nations closer together since 1945, but would also mean the, e excuse me, the UK being at the back of the queue when negotiating new trade deals. This is a pathological lie. It is a monumental lie, a despicable lie, because as we've demonstrated on this programme and others time and time and time again, countries in Europe outside the bloc negotiate more trade deals than Britain. And they do negotiate those trade deals without having to get the permission of the other member states. It's as simple as that. Johnson is right to talk about the fact there hasn't been a, tra a trade deal between uh, Britain and the United States through the lifespan of the European Union. But that's where TTIP comes in, you see. The reason why the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Warburgs and all of these maniacal uh, central banking parasites, why they are desperate for Britain to remain within the European Union, why they are desperate that no matter how hammered the Republic of Ireland, Greece, Italy, Spain or Portugal gets, no matter how poor the people of those countries get, no matter how desperate the situation uh, becomes, they'll never leave. And I told you this over a year ago when Tsipras was elected in Greece and there was universal joy expressed. I said no. It's the same with Jeremy. Don't swear, Richie. Tired of saying, I'm tired of getting emails from people irate because I won't support Corbyn or Sanders or any of the other lawyers. I feel bad about that. You know, I've gotten to know Piers Corbyn recently. He's been on the show a few times. A lovely man. I feel bad about saying that, but it's the truth. Liar. I'm an anti-monarchy Republican. You're a liar, Jeremy. That's what you are. David says he was vibrated into this system. I'm not going to argue with David. 
you know, I've argued with David before. I think, David, there's a lot of truth in what David says. But I would also say Corbyn knew damn well what it was going to be like once he ascended to the throne. Sean was on to say, morning, mate. Uh, Johnson is another controlled opposition. They all swear allegiance to Israel. Well, this is right, and this is one of the great tragedies, and we got into this on the television programme. They, the Zionist central bankers, have chosen both sides of the in-out EU referendum. Britain will not be allowed to leave the European Union. But I urge everybody who is registered to vote in this country, who can vote, get out and vote no. Excuse me, get out and vote to leave. Stick it up to them, is what I say. Should we talk about Hillary Clinton for a minute? Interesting, Hillary Clinton has thrown her oar into this. Not surprisingly, of course. She would have been told by her paymasters, uh, make sure now you talk about why Britain must remain within the European Union. Hillary Clinton is a psychotic mass murderer and, again, a liar of monumental proportions. And is an arch criminal. And it isn't conjecture. It's not, you know, childish ranting. She's an arch criminal. Um, This is a woman who supported in the 1980s the, how would you describe them, the proxy terrorist groups in Nicaragua, known as the Contras. She supported them with her husband. They were uh, involved in coordinating gun shipments in and out of Arkansas while he was governor there. This is the truth. The US federal government was running guns out of Arkansas and the Clintons were involved in it up to their Next, fact, not conjecture. Here's another fact you might not know about Hillary Clinton, as our good friend Gerald Salente calls her. The Clinton Foundation is widely believed, and not in conspiracy circles, but in mainstream media, the Clinton Foundation is a professionally, a professionally run money laundering operation. That's what it is. It's one of the greatest cons, one of the greatest gangster operations ever. And you only have to look at some of the biggest donors to the Clinton Foundation. The House of Saud, the scumbag, torture-happy murderers, the Saudi Arabians. A foundation controlled by Viktor Pinchuk, the Ukrainian oligarch who um, is a bribe specialist and the king of corruption in, uh, you know, in Eastern Europe. Frank Justra you know, helped to become a multi, multi, multi millionaire by Bill Clinton. I could go on. It's only been a few years, actually, since we learned that Justra, who established the foundation with Clinton, donated millions to the donation after Clinton helped him purchase uranium deposits in Kazakhstan. We learned that because the Kazakh officials told us that. Clinton has supported Hitlery Clinton now. Aggressive US invasions uh, or attacks against uh, Haiti, Bosnia, uh, Kosovo. She supported the Clinton regime's illegal bombing of Yugoslavia. Let me tell you about Hillary Clinton. The Clinton family make the Sopranos look small time. You know? They make them look Mickey Mouse. What a world we live in, dear listener. I could have the bailiffs at the front door stealing my meagre possessions. And I do mean meagre if I can't make council tax payments in Manchester. And violent criminal thugs make laws, destroy countries for the puppet master eight Federal Reserve families. What a world we live in. And if it wasn't for DavidIke.com. If it wasn't for Infowars.com, if it wasn't for Michael Rivero and what really happened.com and a few others, people wouldn't know about this stuff historically. They wouldn't know about it. Here's Obama and Cameron talking about TTIP. This is what it's all about. This is why Britain can never be allowed to leave the European Union. Obama and Cameron on TTIP. On economic security, we've succeeded in getting our economies growing and creating jobs for our people. The global economy still faces serious challenges, but last year Britain and the United States were the two fastest growing major economies in the world. 
And we both know just how important trade deals are in driving global growth. So Barack and I remain among the most determined to achieve our vision of a US-EU trade deal. And we're working hard to push this forward because it would add billions to our economies and set the standards for the rest of the world to follow. We face the aftermath of the banking crisis, the need to revive growth and create jobs in our economies, new threats to our security from Russia in the east to the rise of Islamist terrorism in the south, and of course huge global challenges like Ebola and climate change. Yeah, and Obama stood alongside him grinning from ear to ear. If Britain wasn't in the European Union, it could exempt itself from the TTIP deal, which, without any exaggeration or any fear-mongering, is the most terrifying Orwellian nightmarish concept ever dreamed up by any of this cabal. I'm sorry now, and I genuinely am sorry, but I have to keep repeating this every week. Because if I don't repeat it, it doesn't stick with people. And it's deadly serious. Investor state dispute settlements, tribunals allowing companies to sue foreign governments over claims of unfair treatment and to be entitled to compensation, which undermines the power of national governments to act in the interests of their people. That's enough, isn't it? Right there, that should be enough for that deal to be torn up and to be spit in the faces of those who want to implement it. TTIP would allow private firms running NHS services to sue the British government if the government chose to return the services to the public sector. Not that they ever would. At the moment, the European Union and countries within the European Union have pretty strict regulations on GM crops, pesticides and food additives. When the TTIP deal comes in, it opens up our countries to cheaper products, crap basically, with poor standards. Food giants could use investor state dispute settlements to bully governments into dropping legislation to improve food standards. What does that mean? Exactly what it means that you will have Monsatan's Frankenfood on your plate. Always, always part of the agenda. See Transphantomism, the mind-blowing chapter in David's book, Phantom Self. It's never been broken down and it's never been analysed as well as Phantom Self and that particular tra- uh, chapter. That's what's coming if they're allowed. It's 27 minutes past the hour. You are with Sunday View in association with davidike.com forward slash headlines. My name is Richie Allen. Here's a quick break for you back in around about 60 seconds. Stay with me. Have you lost access to important data from a computer hard drive, mobile phone or other storage device? Maybe you have a broken hard drive containing years of information or a smartphone that no longer works from which you'd like the pictures, movies and chats recovered. If you would like to recover data from any type of digital device, including desktop and laptop computers, external hard drives, cameras, smartphones, NAS and RAID servers, then contact Data Clinic today at dataclinic.co.uk now. Do you want to release the full potential of your soul consciousness and find out how to experience that power in all areas of your life now? Go to livingasyoursoul.com for free guidance with in-depth how-to articles, free healing meditations of creation recordings, free soul solutions, and much, much more. Livingasyoursoul.com Making the profound practical join in tonight's discussion by tweeting at richie allen show now even though it's today but there you are even though it's today thanks again colin holden for sending me this article max uh, max phillips <clears throat> excuse me max phillips wrote uh, on ecowatch.com on friday that river this is the headline river explodes into flames from methane coming from nearby fracking sites. And the story goes, so much methane gas is now bubbling up through the Condamine River in Queensland, that's in Australia in case you don't know, that it exploded with fire and held a large flame. Gas seeping into the river began shortly after coal seam gas operations started nearby and is growing in volume and the stretch of river affected is expanding in length and there's a video on the site there ecowatch.com look for the article it's only a couple of days old 
And it's actually a video of the river on fire. Unbelievable. Methane was first discovered bubbling through the Condamine River near Chinchilla in 2012, where coal seam gas wells had been drilled by Origin Energy. There are hundreds of wells in the immediate area with three companies, Origin Energy, Arrow Energy, all operating coal seam gas fields nearby. Unbelievable. Locals are saying this has never happened before. And this is what TTIP is all about, folks. Now that's in Australia, okay? It's got nothing to do with TTIP. But they're signing their own trade agreements. TTIP here would, would, would make it impossible, ultimately, for the people to stop companies doing that, poisoning the land and poisoning the water. And I do think the sponsor of this programme, DavidIke.com, and DavidIke.com forward slash headlines has been saying this for years. Deliberate, deliberate attempt to destroy the rural world and force people into super cities. And when people hear that, they think, madness, crazy conspiracy theory. Thank you, Colin, for sending it to me. Lynn Olson, good morning, Lynn. The Guardian and a few other newspapers had a headline that read Obama, the leader of the free world. That's right, Lynn. Thank you. Matty says, when will people realise that no single politician will ever stand for the population? They're all busy with tyranny. Matty, thank you so much for your tweet, my friend. Folks, tweet at Richie Allen Show. Tell me what it is you're thinking and I will read it out. David Conan was back on to say, it's interesting watching the London Marathon, which is in progress now. I've noticed that the new build developments en route are all sold. To who, asks David? It's a good question, David. Marco says, have you noticed that all lying MPs use the phrase, I believe this and that and the other? Clever bastard, says Marco. Indeed, mate, indeed. This is the speak of the tyrant. Joe Walwyn, good morning, Joe. Nice to hear you live. It's been a while, says Joe. Joe, I'm live every Monday to Thursday at 8 p.m. Uh, BST. But I know what you're saying, my friend. I think it's not possible for you to listen live uh, when I'm on in the week. But uh, for anybody who doesn't uh, or isn't in a position to hear the radio show live in the week, we're podcasted and it's on YouTube as well. Go to youtube.com. Sean was back on to say Brexit will be the last chance for the common man to vote on anything of importance. If this is allowed, if Britain is allowed to stay in the European Union, it's slavery, he says. And in that, he's absolutely right. Let's move on. Keep the tweets coming in. And by the way, the Sunday Times today has a story that says the mega rich are not doing as well as they were last year. Some billionaires apparently have been downgraded to multi-millionaires. (laughs) Ah, mother of Jesus. What a story. Oh, Murdoch, you know. I'm not going to wish any harm to him. There's plenty of harm coming in the afterlife. The co-founder of Apple, Steve Wozniak, a man I know very little about because I'm not much of a techie and I don't use an Apple device. What I do, I'm a lawyer. One of my computers is an iMac, but I don't use a handheld uh, Apple device. Anyway, Wozniak, I don't know much about him. He's been speaking about privacy and surveillance and, of course, the recent attempts by the FBI to compel Apple to plant a backdoor into its software so that terrorists can be tracked. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is because I know many of you use iPhones now. Uh, I thought those of you who use their products, their tablets, their phones would be interested. Take a listen. This is Steve Wozniak, or Wozniak, speaking with Sky News. Apple has resisted the FBI's calls to build software to get into the phone, but it's also resisted calls to unlock phones it does have access to. Um, Where do you draw the line between protecting people's privacy, but also protecting citizens and helping the government that's been elected to protect them? Apple's doing about all it can. Apple doesn't have a switch they can turn on and release the data. Uh, It was recently released at something like uh, three to 5,000 cases. Apple turned over data when they can get data that way. To rewrite the software that makes a phone a good product and keeps its data secure. You know what? The police are interested in communications anyway trying to track down who's talking to whom and what are they saying. That's all done in the communications companies, and the FBI already has all its back doors into Verizon and AT&T, and they've got every single bit of that anyway. So encryption just to protect my data, my my uh, personal codes, my finances, my my photographs and things that are important to me in the phone. Apple, Apple promised that. That's a good thing to do. What if the FBI could come into any company and say, we now have to force you, you have to make your product insecure for us. Why would you build a product that's insecure? That's doing a very bad thing in computer terms. 
Um, Bosniak is good there uh, because he's he's pretty honest. He's brutally honest. He's basically saying that people, people, you know, worried about Apple and pressure from the FBI. What difference does it make? They are listening to whatever they want anyway. They have on, on I suppose, unparalleled access to every facet of our lives through their covert surveillance programs online anyway. And it's a good point he's making, Wozniak. I thought that was interesting. But he was then asked about tax. He was then asked about Apple and its taxes, its payment of taxes or, or non-payment. We've had a lot in the papers about taxes recently. There are a lot of people who are angry that corporations, including Apple, don't pay that much tax. Do you think Apple pays enough tax? I feel very sorry for people that have psychological problems and have to get angry about something that's always existed, that we've always known, that that wealthy parties and companies have all these offshore places to hide money. It's always existed. That doesn't make it right, though, just just as it's always existed. I, no, no, no. It's not. It's not right, and we should say that it's wrong. And uh, but why should we get upset about a new recent one? Every one that comes up. I mean, we are the ones who are basically. We're in a democracy. We voters have control over our Congress people who write the laws that make it possible or not. I mean, just because it's the case doesn't mean that it's right. Should Apple pay more tax? Just financial people. And their motivations are only to find the last little penny that they can get by any trickery to read legal documents and find escapes and loopholes and search for friendly governments. Basically to do what a wealthy person does to try to hide their, their wealth and disguise it and get it out of the tax, away from taxes. Yeah, same thing. But they're paid to do that. And you can't blame them because every single company in the world would do it. And uh, Apple isn't run by a few ethical people. It's run by a millions of shareholders you you and you might have some Apple stock. You're the one who wants them to make the profit. So we feel sorry for people with psychological problems who get angry over tax dodging. <laughs> and it's your problem. It's your fault, all the millions of shareholders. And he also said there that we can ultimately change it. Again, it's our fault because we get to vote in, you know, new people in elections. But his company, Apple and others, donate tens of millions of pounds to pre-select candidates on all sides of of the political spectrum. So they don't really give a shit who is in power. Which is what I bang on about in the radio show every bloody night of the week. And of course the young Sky News presenter was never going to say that to him. The minute he said that to me, and I would have been very polite with him. Steve, Steve, stop now, stop. Don't tell us that we get to change through the ballot box, Steve. Because you own all the candidates, my friend. You don't care who gets elected, mate. It's a rigged game. It's no game has to be broken up. It has to be destroyed. We don't live in democracy. We live in tyranny. And now to Leonardo DiCaprio, who gets more irksome, more annoying. Every time I see his annoying face. DiCaprio, as you probably know, has been speaking to large rooms full of diplomats and bureaucrats in New York on Friday, talking about the United Nations and what we are doing for climate change and the great deal that was signed recently. Warning of disaster by climate change if we don't implement it. No more 10-year study, says Leo. We've got to implement it now. We've got to legislate for it now. This is Leonardo DiCaprio vomiting forth an absolute tirade of horse shit. Listen to this. Our planet cannot be saved unless we leave fossil fuels in the ground where they belong. An upheaval, a massive change is required right now, one that leads to a new collective consciousness, a new collective evolution of the human race, inspired and enabled by a sense of urgency from all of you. We can congratulate each other today, but it will mean absolutely nothing if you return to your countries and fail to push beyond the promises of this historic agreement. Now is the time for bold, unprecedented action. After 21 years of debates and conferences, it is time to declare no more talk, no more excuses, no more 10-year studies, no more allowing the fossil fuel companies to manipulate and dictate the science and policies that affect our future. Did he just say no more allowing the fossil companies to manipulate and dictate the data? He didn't really, did he? But the data 
put forth by the Climate Change Church is fraudulent. The liars manipulate the data to suit their lies. And Piers Corbyn, the meteorologist, revealed this on our show recently and he is above reproach. He cannot be challenged. The only manipulation of data and lying is coming from the Al Gore Brigade. Listen to Piers Corbyn. This is from the 22nd of March edition of the Richie Allen Show, which is available on YouTube. This is Piers. Oh. You said that there was fraud going on, that people were manipulating the graphs. Uh, give, us, um, give us the proof of that. Who's doing that and how do we know they're doing well, it? Well, the World Meteorological Organization, NOAA, the American setup, um, and uh, the Climate Research Unit of East Anglia. Um, in fact, to be very specific, they produce data sets every year uh, of global temperatures. And uh, we were doing research in 2004, and I said to Judy, I'll have a look at this new data set. And she looked and she said, oh, that's fine, Piers, there's interesting stuff this year. But the pra- past years have changed. I said, what do you mean the past years have changed? And she said, well, the past years have changed. It's not, the, not what it was. So uh, we knew then there was something strange going on now, now what we know and there's a graph of it on our, on our website that every year they have selected out some stations and selected in others so they're all real data stations but they choose the ones which are, for whatever reason uh, are rising at present because obviously there's going to be local variations of, of all sorts and, and cutting out the ones which are showing falling temperatures at present Imagine that, leaving in the data from stations that supports their bullshit argument, but ignoring and burying the data from weather stations that contradicts their bullshit argument. So what does that mean then? The fraud, half a degree fraud on world temperatures. What does it ultimately mean? Piers Corbyn continues. So by this and successive years, they manipulate current temperatures to be higher and our past temperatures to be lower. And if you compare the data sets for which they produced around 2010 with the ones they produced to around 2000 or 2001, uh, there's a the rise in temperature in that 10 years is is being uh, increased in in the latest data set by half a degree. So what they've done is committed half a degree temperature rise fraud on world temperatures. Now, if you take off half a degree on current world temperatures. The recent peak around reaching, as I said, around 2002, three or whatever, um, comes to about the same as the uh, big peak at the end of the uh, 1930s or early 1940s. And you would... Uh, there's been no global warming since then. We've just had fluctuations around a 60-year cycle and, and many other cycles. And we're now we're entering a, a longer, cooler cycle upon which there will be the 60-year fluctuation. And this is, of course, why when asked to debate Piers Corbyn on the programme, Friends of the Earth and Greenpeace and somebody else we invited on, former uh, CEO of another big, you know, climate change organisation, refused to debate Piers Corbyn because what we did here at the Richie Allen Show was we cross-referenced and cross-checked every single claim that Piers Corbyn had made about the fraudulent data. And he was right. He's 100% right. The world isn't... Uh, warming right now and any temperature fluctuations over the last 100 years, 200 years are natural man is not driving uh, climate change through man's burning of fossil fuels and carbon and I'm no fan of fossil fuels and carbon fuels either you know we could be a lot, we could be a lot cleaner and don't get me started on the great Nikola Tesla and free energy and all of that, that's a whole other story I have no time for the big oil and gas companies either. But we've got to tell the truth. Man's activity on planet Earth is not now, nor has it ever, driven climate. The climate and the temperatures on this planet are driven by the sun. Amazing, isn't it? No mention of the sun in the bullshit climate models. Let's read a few tweets. Tweet at Richie Allen Show uh, or email richie at richieallen.co.uk. Good morning, Simon Oakton. How are you, Simon? Thanks for listening. Uh, I tweeted, I retweeted the link that you gave us from the EU referendum. Uh, It must be from the literature. Uh, The truth is, from an economic perspective, nobody really knows what will happen if the UK leaves or remains in the union. But what we can expect is that there will be ever closer political union in what will inevitably become a federal European union. Perhaps we should base our votes 
on whether we want to be a part of a federal European Union or not. What we must build is a kind of United States of Europe, quote from Winston Churchill in 1946. Yeah, Karen was on to say, oh God, the Apple, um, uh, former Apple uh, boss, uh, Steve Wozniak, oh God, he's saying we shouldn't get angry about Apple paying tax. Is he for real? I'm sitting here fizzing, says Karen. And Sin, who's in Greece, good morning, Sin. No such thing as smart tech privacy. Does nobody watch movies and series? Those on the run, break your SIM and throw out the mobile, says Sin. Sin, I, I, I love the romanticism. I like to think that there are a lot of our listeners on the run somewhere. <laughs> Sounds good, but they're still making time to listen to the Richie Allen show. Pugilist Thinker on Twitter says, could we create something which targets the sheeple? Hashtag it. Target the online community. And he also says, the Brexit campaign is redundant of a cohesive message which engages the sheeple. Don't you think? Or am I naive? No, you're not, mate. You are 100% right. The Leave Europe team, Johnson and Grayling and uh, Preeti Patel and all the other Dirt bags were carefully selected. Were carefully selected so that there wouldn't be a cohesive message and there would be some sort of, as they are calling it now, infighting over things like Obama and all of that. They, of course, were pre selected, these people. You know, they're not going to have Derek Hyde, who, you know, oversees the sales of the Nazi roots, the Nazi roots of the Brussels EU, that great book we talked about in the week. I'm not going to let these people have a national stage. You're absolutely right, pugilist thinker. 100%. Sin was back on to say it's no coincidence that DiCaprio got his, uh, his Oscar this year. Yeah, he's playing the game, Sin. He's playing the game. Lynn says here in Denmark they are getting ready to put the military in to guard the borders. The totalitarian tiptoe marches onwards, uh, says Lynn. Yes, 100%. 100%. It's 13 minutes to the top of the air. Going to take another very quick break. When I come back, I'm going to talk to you, and you really want to hear about this now, I'm going to talk to you about the FBI inventing terror plots. Don't miss it. Back with you in 60 seconds. Do you want to release the full potential of your soul consciousness and find out how to experience that power in all areas of your life now. Go to livingasyoursoul.com for free guidance with in-depth how-to articles, free healing meditations of creation recordings, free soul solutions, and much, much more. Livingasyoursoul.com Making the profound practical. Have you lost access to important data from a computer hard drive, mobile phone, or other storage device? Maybe you have a broken hard drive containing years of information, or a smartphone that no longer works from which you'd like the pictures, movies, and chats recovered. If you would like to recover data from any type of digital device, including desktop and laptop computers, external hard drives, cameras, smartphones, NAS, and RAID servers, then contact Data Clinic today at dataclinic.co.uk now. Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. It's lovely to be with you every Sunday morning. I really, really enjoy it. Doing Sunday View Live has been a real, real, really good idea. It's probably the only good idea I've had for a long time. Um, I'm patting myself on the back there. I shouldn't be doing that. But uh, yeah, doing it live, it's brilliant. Love the interaction. Thanks for getting out of bed to listen to it. And uh, don't forget, if you're coming in on the end of it, it will be on podcast 15 minutes after it ends. And it'll be on YouTube uh, an hour and a half or two hours after that. It takes a while to upload to YouTube. And you can share it with other people. If you think it's worth sharing, if you think any of the opinions I've expressed here are worth sharing with other people, share it away. I'll be grateful for your help there. Kim Erswell came back to me. Kim, thank you. Let's not forget that VAT is set to rise to 23% too, as is written in the Lisbon Treaty. We're being bled to death by tax. Kim, you are so right. Because if I take the future Mrs. Allen for a drink this afternoon, every fucking thing I buy, I pay tax on. Even if it's a packet of crisps, a beer, we are being ridden, rode, raped. 
How dare they talk to us about tax rises? VAT, Karen Kelly, my pal in Glasgow, is spot on. How dare they? I can't go outside the door without being taxed. Jesus Christ. I'd forgotten about that, Kim. You've round, you've, you've, you've rounded me. You've wound me up right there. Oh. See, I was going to get through a whole show without swearing. Just one. Gone. Alex Dowse, good morning, Alex. Loving the live Sunday views. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate that. Live is better, isn't it? Live is better. Uh, it, it really is. Uh, and uh, Tomati, everybody who's tweeting in there, great stuff. Your opinion is vital. Uh, it really is vital to me, you know. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's just a rant by me and I'm ramming my opinion down your throat. I want your opinion. Whatever it is, whether it disagrees or agrees or whatever, just tweet me and tell me what you're thinking. Thanks, Anne, for the, uh, for, the, for the link to the Sunday Mirror story. The Labour Party are to block police volunteers attending abuse and terror incidents. Shadow Home Secretary Andy Burnham says public safety is at risk thanks to Theresa May's intended measures to make up an officer shortfall. Brilliant uh, link, uh, Anne. And, and of course, it goes to the heart of what Sean Bloor, the great Sean Bloor, was talking to me about on the show earlier last week. That interview is on YouTube. The decimation of vital services to people in this country in order so that they can be privatised. That's what it's about. Oh, yeah. Let's move. Oh, by the way, I tweeted out that link to EcoWatch, uh, uh, the, the flames in the river in Queensland, in Australia. So uh, you might want to see that. I just tweeted that out there, uh, dear listener, just now. So finally for today, finally for today, and importantly, I left, I, left, I, left, I left a good story for the final story. Are you listening? You're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. FBI informants acted as honey pots to trap a 21 year old man posing as love interests to glean information audio obtained by the intercept reveals now RT has this RT has this right that the FBI have been setting people up to commit crimes so that they can talk about terrorism and terrify the bejesus out of people in America one woman lured a 21-year-old 20 man, was lured by a woman working for the FBI into making a false claim that he tried to go to Syria to fight with the Islamic State. Now, Gayan or Gayan Chichikian is an outstanding journalist. She really is. And works for RT USA. She's filed this report. It won't surprise you, dear listener, but we're trying to reach those who normally think that you and I are conspiracy lunatics. Share this with them, listen. Well, Yunan, you think of the FBI as trying to disrupt terror plots. How about the FBI creating plots? Apparently, the FBI does that all the time, specifically targeting American Muslims. In a 2014 report, the Human Rights Watch took a close look at the U.S. government's counterterrorism sting operations and concluded that many of those who were prosecuted would never have committed a crime if not for law enforcement encouraging, pressuring, and sometimes paying them to commit terrorist acts. There have been over 500 people prosecuted for terrorism-related offenses. And this is a number that sounds really big, and it makes it sound like Americans are being kept safe from terrorism attacks. But we found that in a lot of these cases, people were prosecuted who never would have committed a terrorist act in the first place if it weren't for the involvement of the FBI. Another study by Muslim advocacy group say, Salam sir? concluded that 95% of terrorism-related arrests have been the result of the FBI foiling its own plots. In 2009, for example, they arrested four men for planning to blow up synagogues in Bronx and attack a U.S. military base. Uh -huh. And they were prosecuted despite the fact that the FBI came up with that plan, provided the means, and encouraged these individuals in every possible way. U.S. law enforcement's methods in these sting operations have raised many concerns. Uh, one of them is that the government may be creating terrorists out of often vulnerable individuals who may have otherwise never committed a crime. It's amazing, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? The four men arrested in the Bronx were acting out an FBI-created terror plot. How long has David Icke been writing about false flag terrorism? How long has David been writing and talking about people being set up as patsies by the state? One of the voices you heard in there was Andrea Prasov, 
who's with Human Rights Watch in Washington. It's extraordinary. As David said to me some uh, years ago when I was uh, working in Spain, as the agenda rolls forward, it becomes increasingly difficult to hide it from people. It's out in the open now. You look at the Oklahoma bombing. What year was that, dear listener? Was it 96 or 95? I'm going to have a look while I'm chatting to you there now. I think it was 95, wasn't it? The Oklahoma bombing. Uh, Timothy McVeigh, of course, eh? It was April the 19th, uh, 1995, so we've just had a 21st anniversary of it. Only a few days ago. You know, it's widely believed that the FBI set that up as a sting operation. Resulted in the murder of hundreds of people in that Oklahoma uh, federal building. They've been doing it for years. And you tell that to your friend, or you tell that to your brother or your sister, and you're a lunatic. That's what they've been doing. Why would they do it? Because they promote endless war. They promote interventionism in the poorest countries in the world to tackle so-called extremism. While they're making up all these bullshit plots and arresting people for nothing, they're actually funding real terrorists. Lunatics like the jihadists that they've named the Islamic State, that they've named. They even give them names, as they gave Al-Qaeda their name. They drive refugees into Europe to promote chaos that never ends. That's the world we're living in. And you are probably like me, dear listener, you're probably getting tired of people trolling around on Facebook and on Twitter and on YouTube saying it's all crazy conspiracy nonsense. Even the MSM now can't avoid talking about or breaking some of these stories. Imagine, 96% of terror plots in the United States are actually started by, created by the FBI. Amazing, isn't it? Wow, absolutely amazing. That is kind of it for Sunday View. We're coming up to the top of the year. I want to thank you very much for listening to it and giving me some of your time on your Sunday. I really, really, really do appreciate that. We've got some terrific programmes lined up for you in the coming week on the Richie Allen Radio Show. Starting tomorrow, Wayne Madsen and John Perkins join me. Uh, John's an air two, Wayne is an air one. Should be a cracking show tomorrow. I've not got the diary to hand, but Claire's um, lined up some terrific guests for next week. Uh, thank you, Claire Calvi, for production. Folks, do share the podcast and please share the YouTube videos around. It really does help out the programme. That I ask you to do that specifically if you don't make a financial contribution. Now, when I say if you don't make a financial contribution, it's not to make you feel bad at all. Everybody is broke. I understand that. So if you don't make a financial con- contribution, make it your business once or twice a day to share some of our YouTube videos on your Facebook page I will absolutely love you for that. So please do that. Sin came back on to say, by the way, VAT in Greece, 13% on the basics, 23% on everything else. Now it's going to be 24% across the board. They have raped the Greeks. That's what they've done. And by they, I mean Alexis Tsipras and Yanis Herman Munster Varoufakis. Because they have overseen the implementation of the Zionist banking agenda in Greece. They did their part. Fool the people into believing that you really oppose it and then lead the people blind into even further tyranny. That's what Varoufakis did. That's why I was so abusive, not abusive, uh, why I was so critical earlier on of Owen Jones, the faux socialist, the faux human being who writes for The Guardian. Pathological liar. He is. They are all pathological liars. I'm going to leave you and love you. Thank you so much again. Go to richieallen.co.uk. Please do, if you can support the programme. There are PayPal details and bank account details there. I will be forever grateful. Stay with davidike.com forward slash headlines. Uh, check out my friend markbazerski.com. Check out Mark's website. Uh, and do, do, do pay a visit to our sponsors, dataclinic.co.uk and livingasyoursoul.com. Have a fantastic Wednesday. Have a fantastic Wednesday, did he say? Have a fantastic rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Spend it with those you love. Disconnect, as I said last week. Get out of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the information and the horrors of it for a while. Smell the flowers while you can. And I'll see you again tomorrow at 8 p.m. BST. Until then, thank you very much. 
Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. 